this is High Hrothgar. And it seems that they've noticed I'm here. Alright, Garm. You wait here by the door. I'm not sure how these greybeards would feel about having a dog roaming around. So, just be good. Stay here, and I'll come back. Well, whenever I find out what's going on here. Good boy. Uh, hello. I'm sorry to disturb you here. Oh, hi. So, a dragonborn appears at this moment. In the turning of the age. Uh... Huh. Well... If you say so... I'm here to answer your summons. We will see if you truly have the gift. Yeah, I have my Show doubts. Us, Dragonborn. Let us taste of your voice. Oh. Um... Okay... Shout at us, and let us taste of your voice. All right. Are you sure about this? Maybe I should back up a little Do bit. Don't be afraid. Your shout will not harm us. Okay. Well, let's see if this still actually works. Oof. Apparently it does. Is you. Welcome to High Hrothgar. Ah, uh, thank you. I am Master Arngil. I speak for the Greybeards. Now, tell me, Dragonborn, why have you come here? You're seriously asking me why I'm here? Really? Honestly, I'm surprised there wasn't a line of people out there banging on the door to come in, claiming that they were all dragonborn. I mean, <laughs> while I would rather not be here at all, the only reason that, I, that I'm here is because I'm answering your summons. We are honored to welcome a dragonborn to High Hrothgar. <sighs> we will do our best to teach you how to use your gift in fulfillment of your destiny. I'm, I'm sorry, I was a little bit rude there. But this is all a bit much for me. You're talking about destiny? What is this destiny that you, you think I have? That is for you to discover. We can oh, show course. you the way, but not your destination. All right. I want to find out what this all means. People have been calling me Dragonborn, but... What does it even mean to be Dragonborn? Well, we are here to guide you in that pursuit. Just as the Greybeards have sought to guide those of the Dragonblood that came before you. I mean, I knew I'm not the only... Well, if I am Dragonborn at all, as you seem to think I am, that there are others who have come before me. You are not the first. There have been many of the Dragonblood since Akatosh first bestowed that gift upon mortal kind. Whether you are the only Dragonborn of this age, that is not ours to know. Okay. You are the only one that has been revealed thus far. That is all I can say. Well, I'm here, and I guess I'm as ready to learn as I'm going to be. You have shown that you are dragonborn. You have the inborn gift. The gift but to make a mess. do you have the discipline and temperament to follow the path laid out for you? Huh. Now, that remains to be seen. Yes, it does. Without training, you have already taken the first steps towards projecting your voice into a throne. Now let us see if you are willing and able to learn. When you shout, you speak 
in the language of dragons. Thus, your dragon blood gives you an inborn ability to learn words of power. The language of dragons? All shouts are made up of three words of power. As you master each word, your shout will become progressively stronger. Hmm. Master Einarth will now teach you Ro, the second word in unrelenting force. Ro means balance in the dragon tongue. Combine it with Fus, force, to focus your thumb more sharply. Ro. Um. Oh. Wow. Oh. You learn a new word like a boss. I see. You truly do have the gift. But learning a word of power is only the first step. You must unlock its meaning through constant practice in order to use it in a shout. Well, that practice. is how the rest of us hmm. learn shouts. As Dragonborn, you can absorb a slain dragon's life force and knowledge directly. Is that what happened? As part of your initiation, Master Einarth will allow you to tap into his understanding of Rome. Uh. Okay. Now, Thank you. I think. Sorry? Ooh. Use your unrelenting force shout to strike the targets as they appear. Oh, okay. Um... I guess I can try that. Okay. Whoa. Uh, sorry. Oh, I really am making a mess of this place. Well done. Again. Okay. Here we go. Whoa. Ugh. Okay, maybe I should aim this way. You learn quickly. Once more. Okay, one more time. Impressive. Your thumb is precise. Is it? You show great promise, Dragon. Okay. You will perform your next trial in the courtyard. Follow Master Boy. Oh, um. That must be Master Bori. Uh, do you mind if I bring my dog along with me outside? I don't know, for some reason, I feel a lot more comfortable having you with me here. Come on, puppy. You're really very calm to be dealing with all this shouting. You're handling this better than I am. Okay, they're waiting for me outside. Hmm, back into the cold again. Though honestly, inside isn't all that much warmer than out here. It's not exactly a very inviting place even if I have been summoned here. Okay. You will now see how you learn a completely new shout. Master Bori will teach you wool, which means whirlwind. Whirlwind. Okay. You must hear the word within yourself before you can project it into a thumb. World. Approach Master Bor and he will gift you his character wood. Thank you, Master Bori. Now we will see how quickly you can master a new shot. Master Wolfgar will demonstrate whirlwind sprint. Then it will be your turn. Whirlwind sprint, okay. Master Bori. Whoa. Your turn. 
Stand next to me. Master Bori will open the gate. Use your whirlwind sprint to pass through before it closes. Now that is an interesting use of the voice. Or th thum. That's what you called it, right? Thum? Hmm. Whirlwind Sprint. Okay. Whoa. Ah. Uh -huh. Hi, Garm. Hi, Wolfgar. That was. That was intense. Let me try that again. Your quick mastery of a new thume is uh, astonishing. I'd heard the stories of the abilities of Dragonborn, but to see it for myself? Uh, I don't really know how I'm doing this. It's just kind of happening. You were given this gift by the gods for a reason. It is up to you to determine how best to use it. I see. You are now ready for your last trial. Retrieve the horn of Jorgen Windcaller, our founder, from his tomb in the ancient fane of Ustengrav. Ustengrav? Remain true to the way of the voice, and you will return. Oh, that sounds reassuring. Sky, guard you. Well, glad to see you're getting friendly here, Garm. Oh, let me... Wind, guide you. you. You've been telling me that I have this power, the voice, but this doesn't really tell me anything that I need to know. I mean, how to use it, yes, maybe that will be useful to me, but why do I need to use it at all? What does it even mean to be dragonborn? Why, why is this happening to me? Dragons have the inborn ability to learn and project their voice. Dragons also are able to absorb the power of their slain brethren. A few mortals are born with similar abilities. Whether a gift or a curse has been a matter of debate down through the centuries. So but far, you I'm voting curse. In a few days, took even the most gifted of us years to achieve. Really? Some believe that dragonborn are sent into the world by the gods at times of great need. We will speak more of that later, when you are ready. When I'm ready for what? I mean, is this because of the dragons are returning? Do you know why that's happening? Does this have something to do with me? No doubt, the appearance of a dragonborn at this time is not an accident. Your destiny is surely bound up with the return of the dragons. Great. You should focus on honing your voice, and soon your path will be made clear. Thank you, but surely there's more you can tell me. There is indeed much that we know that you do not. That does not mean that you are ready to understand it. Oh. Do not let your easy mastery of the voice tempt you into the arrogance of power. That has been the downfall of many dragonborn before you. I'd rather not have this power at all. At least you could do is tell me what I'm supposed to be doing with it. Fine. At least, okay, if you're not going to tell me about that, then can you tell me more about these shouts? You said they were in the dragon language. Why is that? Dragons have always been able to shout. Language is intrinsic to their very being. There is no difference in the dragon tongue between debating and fighting. Shouting comes as naturally to a dragon as breathing or speaking. Interesting. In mythic times, when mortal kind was in great need, the goddess Kinnereth granted us the ability to speak as dragons do. For most people, long years of training are required to learn even the simplest shout. 
But for you, the dragon speech is in your blood, and you learn it almost without effort. That is strange how easy it is for me to understand these new words that you've taught me. I don't know why, but it seems like it just seems right knowing what they mean without even thinking about it. Strange. But it isn't like that for you? I don't really know much about the Greybeards. I mean, we've all heard of you. We've heard stories of how you summoned Talos himself. But what can you tell me about yourselves? We study the way of the voice according to the teachings of our founder, Jürgen Winkor. Very few are permitted to study with us here at High Hrothgar. But in your case, Dragonborn, it is a privilege to guide you towards mastery of your voice. I'm not sure you're going to say that after you've known me for a little bit longer. Um... What is this way of the voice that you've mentioned? The voice was a gift of the goddess Kinnereth at the dawn of time. She gave mortals the ability to speak as dragons do. Although this gift has often been misused, the only true use of the voice is for the worship and glory of the gods. That I can true do. The mastery of the voice can only be achieved when your inner spirit is in harmony with your outward actions. That might be a little bit harder. The sky, Kinnereth's domain, and the practice of the voice. We strive to achieve this balance. Okay. Well, I can certainly try to do that. I have no problem with following whatever way is Kinnereth has set out. Um, so I, I will try to follow the way of the voice. Is that If that's what it means, if that's what is right for someone who uses the voice. That is commendable. But remember, the dragon blood is itself a gift of Akatosh. Do not try to deny that gift. <sighs> your destiny requires you to use your voice. Why else would Akatosh have bestowed this power upon you? <sighs> if you remember to use your know. voice in service to the purpose of Akatosh, you will remain true to the way. Okay. Using the voice in service of the gods. Well, at least that gives me something to go by. Even if I don't know exactly what it is that Akatosh or Kinnereth or any of the divines might want from me. But there, there are only four of you Greybeards here. I would have thought if it is something that you can learn and not just something that's given to you by Akatosh, necessarily. If you can learn it by study, why are there only four of you? Five. Our leader, Parthenax, lives alone on the peak of the throat of the world. Parthenax? When your voice can open the path, you will know you are ready to speak to him. I see. Parthenax. I feel like I've heard that name somewhere recently. Wait a second, wasn't the name Parthenax on one of the emblems? Hmm. Either this is a name that gets passed down, or this Parthenax is very old. So, if he isn't down here to, to meet me, when can I meet him? As I said, you will know you are ready when your voice can open the path to him. Oh, thanks. Nice and cryptic. Um, so, this trial that you want me to undertake, this final trial, uh, you said something about Jürgen Windcaller? Who was that? 
He was a great war leader of the ancient Nords, master of the voice or tongue. After the disaster at Red Mountain, where the Nord army was annihilated, he spent many years pondering the meaning of that terrible defeat. He finally came to realize that the gods had punished the Nords for their arrogant and blasphemous misuse of the voice. He was the first to understand that the voice should be used solely for the glory and worship of the gods, not the glory of men. Jürgen hmm. Windcaller's mastery of the voice eventually overcame all opposition, and the way of the voice was born. So that's what the emblems were talking about then. Okay. Well, thank you, Master Arngar. You've given me a lot to think about, even if you haven't answered as many questions as I would have hoped for. Sky above, voice within. Uh, sky above, voice within. I think that was a greeting of some sort. Huh. So their leader lives somewhere up there. I guess that's where this path leaves. A uh, path leads, rather. He said, when my voice can open the way, then I can go and meet their leader. Hmm. Ow, ow, ow. Garm, get away from there. Come on. Ow. Yeah, I know, that, that was not pleasant. Oh, poor dog. <sighs> okay. So, let's see. I wonder if this shout that I first learned has something to do with it. What happens if I shout at the wind? Uh, nothing much. At least yeah. not with the f not with the first word. Okay, what if I try the second word? Bruce, bro. No. So maybe once I learned that third the third word of this shout, he did say they come in threes, right? Maybe the third word will be enough to let me up the path to the top of the mountain. Oh, there goes the sun. Have I really been up here that long? Wow. I guess we must be staying here tonight. Hmm. I hope they don't mind having us as guests for the evening. I won't bother him. Come on, let's go inside, boy. <sighs> this place me makes me feel like I should be whispering. I guess it's what some people would call peaceful, though it hasn't really brought me any peace. Come on, let's look around. I'm sure they can't expect... Shh, be quiet, boy. I'm sure they can't expect us to be on our way just like that. Oh. They have some instruments, so... That's a good sign, I guess. That they like music. I wonder what purpose this- oh, there's more doors to the courtyard, okay. Still, this hallway seems a little bit pointless going all the way down there. Hmm. 
Huh. Maybe while we're here we can borrow some of their books. Have a bit of a read. Okay, so this must be their living quarters. Though, no guest bed. Hmm. One of their capes. So that's what we've got down here. Let's see the books. Uh, Spirit of Nern. Some books about the Dwemer, Wismother, Remanata. I'm not really familiar with that book, but it has something to do with um, the, the Riemann dynasty of the Empire, I guess. Chapter 1. Sancritor and the birth of Riemann. Okay, so this is about the first Riemann Cyrodiil. Oh yeah. I mean, I know this story though. Not really in this style. Hmm. Wait a second. The Alduin Akatosh dichotomy. I thought Alduin was just another name for Akatosh. What's this about? Here, I'm gonna have a sit down and. No, I'm going to stand up and uh, browse through this book. The Alduin Akatosh Dichotomy, Book 7 of 2920, The Last Year of the First Era, by Alexandra Simone, High Priest of the Akatosh Chantry, Wayrest. As High Priest of the Akatosh Chantry, I have dedicated my life to the service of the Great Dragon. He who was first at the beginning, he who is greatest and most powerful of all the divines, he who is the very embodiment of infinity. I am, quite obviously, a man of deep and unwavering faith, but not blind faith, for I am also a man of scholarly endeavors and have always valued education and the pursuit of truth in all its forms. And so I have had the honor and privilege of making it my life's work to discover the truth about Akatosh in all of our beloved divine's incarnations. Throughout the civilized world, and I refer not only to the Empire, but to every nation on Great Nern that has embraced the virtues of le learning and letters, the great dragon is worshipped. Usually the highest of divines is referred to as Akatosh. But what some may not be aware of is that he is occasionally referred to by two other names as well. Okay, I knew that. The Aldmer? Aldmer, not Aldmer? This must be old. The Aldmer refer to Akatosh as Ariel. The Nords call him Alduin. These names come up repeatedly in certain ancient texts, and in each one it is clear that the deity in question is none other than he whom we call Akatosh. Yet there are those who believe, even in this enlightened age, that this is not so that the regional interpretations of Akatosh are not interpretations of Akatosh at all. Rather, they are references to altogether different deities, deities who may or may not share the same aspects or be the great dragon at all. Many Altmer of Somerset Isle worship Ariel, who is the soul of Anuiel, who in turn is the soul of Anu the Everything. Yeah, I <laughs> Once we go back to Anu and Padme, that's when I start getting confused about theology. 
But if you ask the High Elves themselves, as I did when I traveled to Somerset Isle to continue my research, the majority will concede that Ariel is but Akatosh with a different name, colored by their own cultural beliefs. So maybe it comes as no surprise that the real theological dissension lies in Skyrim among the Nord people, renowned as much for their stubbornness as they are their hardiness and prowess on the fields of valor. When I journeyed to the Stark White Province, I was surprised to find a people whose views on Akatosh are almost diametrically opposed to those of the Altmer. The majority of Nord people seem to believe that their Alduin legend is not Akatosh, but another deity entirely. A great dragon, yes, but not THE great dragon. Well, this is news to me. Maybe this is really a Skyrim thing? Because all of the Nords that I know back home, including my mother, I mean, they don't use the name Alduin much, but they all seem to assume that Alduin and Akatosh are one and the same. Hmm. Determined to get to the heart of this matter, I consulted with several Nords, chief among them an old and respected clan chief, by the name of Bjorn Much Bloodied. And what surprised me most about those I talked to was not that they believed in Alduin instead of Akatosh, but rather that they recognized Alduin in addition to Akatosh. In fact, most children of Skyrim seem to view Akatosh in much the same way I do. He is, in fact, the Great Dragon, first among the Divines, Perseverance personified, and, more than anything, a force of supreme good in the world. Alduin, they claim, is something altogether different. Whether or not he is actually a deity remains in question, but the Alduin of Nord for f folklore is, in fact, a dragon, but one so ancient and so powerful he was dubbed the World Eater and some accounts even have him devouring the souls of the dead to maintain his own power. Oh, that's not pleasant at all. It doesn't sound like Akatosh either. Other stories revolve around Alduin acting as some sort of a dragon king, uniting the other dragons in a war against mankind until he was eventually defeated at the hands of one or more brave heroes. So the, the Dragon War? I mean, I've heard of the Dragon War. I, I'm afraid my knowledge of history is mostly more recent than that, but... Hmm. Alduin. The Dragon War. I have a bad feeling about this. It is hard to deny that such legends are compelling, but as both high priest and scholar, I am forced to ask that most important of questions. Where is the evidence? The Nords of Skyrim place a high value on their oral traditions, but such is the core of their unreliability. A rumor passed around the Wayrest Market Square can train, change so dramatically in the course of a few simple hours that by the end of the day, one might believe half the city's residents were involved in any number of scandalous activities. Well, that's probably because they most likely are, because in most cities, half the residents are involved in any number of scandalous activities, really. How, then, is an educated, enlightened person possibly supposed to believe a legend that has been passed down by word of mouth only for hundreds or even thousands of years? The answer to such a question is simple. He cannot. Hmm. And so it is my conclusion that the Alduin of Nord legend is in fact mighty Akatosh, whose story grew twisted and deformed through centuries of retelling and embellishment. Through no real fault of their own, the primitive peoples of Skyrim failed to understand the goodness and greatness of the great dragon. And it was this lack of understanding that formed the basis of what became, ironically, their most impressive creative achievement, Alduin the World Eater, Phantom of Bedtime Stories, and Justification for Ancient, If Imagined, Deeds. 
Well, I can't say I disagree with him necessarily. I haven't really heard of this idea before of Alduin being something other than Akatosh. Then again, he was kind of condescending there about Nord tradition. Hmm. But just because something is tradition doesn't necessarily mean it's true. I don't know, Garm, what do you think? Yeah, that's that's very helpful. Okay, well what else? Songs of the Return. The Monomyth. More theology. The Dragon Break. Mm. Oh. Oh yeah, yeah. I know this song. Isn't there a copy of that down in the house in Iverstead? I seem to remember seeing it recently, anyway. Okay, oh. So what's this way? The main chamber again. Oh, all these pots I... I should help clean this up. But I also don't want to disturb their meditation. Speaking of disturbing their meditation... Yeah, give me that innocent look, as always. Okay, well, what's over here on this side? Mm, more books. I could spend a lot of time here just reading. Maybe I will before I go back down the mountain. The Dragon War. I think I might come back to that book. Oh, what do we have here? Some kind of meeting room? Dining hall? It's a lot more than four seats here. So, is this here because... Hush, dog. Is this table here because they used to have many more members? Or is there some other purpose? Okay, let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 seats around the table. Three times as many as there are graybeards, at least graybeards living down here. Hmm. Well, since there does not seem to be any sort of guest room. Maybe I'll set up my bedroll in here. I'd really rather not have to camp outside tonight, and I'm sure that they won't mind me sticking around for the evening. No, they shouldn't mind that. Alright, well... I can't say that this trip has been as productive as I would have liked, but at least I'm learning something. It's just not really learning anything that I wanted to know. Mm -hmm.